but I'm about to change back. I'm about to spaz out up in here. So you're going to have to help me because I'm trying, I'm trying, God, to teach your word. I'm trying to preach, but I'm about to revert back to being a locust. God, I'm about to revert back to who I used to be. I'm about to go back into my old stomping ground. <laughs> I'm trying, God, but I'm about to spaz out. I know what you told me to do, but these people keep pushing my buttons. <laughs> they keep pushing me. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. And I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> Y'all don't understand, so... <laughs> that, that's why he said when I try to do right, evil is always around he said, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm about to go back to being a locust. And Saul probably would have stayed in Jerusalem, but he knew as long as he was there, he would not be able to move around freely. So God knew when he chose Saul that he would run as hard for him as he did against him. That's the difference between some of us and Saul. When we get saved, we get scared. All of a sudden, our gangster characteristics and our locust characteristics have somehow vanished. We have become fearful. When we change size, we become fearful. But the word said that Saul became more powerful. Saul was teaching and preaching the word so hard that his identity started to change. His identity started to change. And Acts 13 and 9 tells us that his name changed from Saul to Paul. And I told you that once a locust gets in a different environment, their characteristics starts to change. So yeah, Paul is still a locust. His color is just changing. Now instead of being dark brown, he's green like a grasshopper and full of life. Now he's destroying things in the name of Jesus. The man is casting out demons and everything. The audacity. How in the world can someone with a past like Paul be so powerful? <laughs> How can someone with a past like Paul be powerful enough where the demons have to obey what he says. Paul's anointing brought crowds. Everyone wanted to hear what this man had to say. The locust had transformed into a beautiful grasshopper. Even though Paul had transformed, the people still saw him as Saul. Acts 13 and 45 says, when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. People will be jealous <clears throat> of your name, but still want your anointing. <laughs> they know that your anointing brings a crown and that it brings wealth. They just hate the fact that it's associated with you. They want your gift, but not your name. Not only do they want the gift, the real issue is that they secretly want to be you. <laughs> they want the same anointing that you have. And the thing is, you can't handle the anointing that's upon my life. Paul had to go through this same thing in the Bible. Acts 19 and 13 says, some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. And they would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. <laughs> Don't try to say my name now because my name brings clout. <laughs> I am a locust, remember? Nobody wants to see the beauty in a locust until they start seeing the power that comes with it. But you don't understand what I had to go through to receive this power. <laughs> Paul was locked up numerous of times because of the power that he possessed. This power didn't just come with rewards, it came with suffering. Paul had to endure suffering inside of his reaping season. So stop trying to have a copycat anointing because you don't have the power that I possess. You're trying to be like me and copy me, but my anointing will whoop you cat raggedy if you keep using it. <laughs> the Bible said the evil spirit said, Jesus I know <laughs> and Paul I know, <laughs> but who are you? <laughs> Talia, I know. <laughs> David, I know. <laughs> Toya, I know. But who are you? <laughs> He's saying that you are really not the real thing because the real thing can never be replicated. 
and he hears what the people are saying about him, he stands boldly and tells the people, I know who I was. I know what I did. I know I was with y'all running my mouth. I know that was me and talking about God. I even persecuted some of his followers. I even talked about some of y'all. And what I like about Paul that even in suffering, <laughs> he was still worshiping God. Even though he was a grasshopper, he said, don't get it, don't get it mistaken. Yeah, I've changed into a grasshopper, but I was still a locust. The locust never comes out of me. That's still who I am. I said, you know the story of Paul and Silas? The men worshiping God while being locked up. They were praying and singing hymns to God. They had the whole prison listening to them. And all of a sudden, the foundations of the prison were shaken. And the doors started to fly open. And it says the chains on them began to break. Because if my people who were called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from your wicked ways, Because every time Paul was locked up, he called on the name of Jesus. There was a worshiping that he had to do. There was some praying that he had to do. There was some fasting that he had to do. So if my people who will call on my name shall humble themselves and pray. <laughs> he said, if you just pray and seek my face and turn God says I'm trying to heal the land I'm trying to shake the foundations I'm trying to break the chains every time like I said every time Paul was in jail God showed him a way out the anointing was so heavy on Paul even the jailer invited him over to his house God will put you in a place where your enemies will have to bless you but if we do, if we don't give into the word of the Lord, if we're unable to hear his voice, then this is just the beginning of what we're going to see. You think COVID-19 has came over and destroyed the world, but this is just the beginning of what we will see if his people don't turn. We have to be like Saul and turn from our wicked ways. We have to come to come under subjection of the Holy Spirit. We are in a season of isolation. God chosen peoples are the ones who are in sin. It's the ones that know him that he's talking about. Not the ones he don't. So yes, I used to be one of them. But then I had an encounter for real. But then I met God for real. But then I got to know him for real. My God had to humble me. He had to bring me into a place of isolation. He had to bring me down to a low place where it was only me and him. I had to come to reality of myself. And when I heard his voice, I asked him, God, what is it that you want me to do? And he said, if my people who were called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then they will hear from heaven. Then I will come through and heal the land. But all you got to do is seek my faith, turn from your wicked ways. I said, seek my faith, turn from my wicked ways.
and follow my instructions. All I need you to do, faith world, is turn from your wicked ways. <laughs> then you will hear my voice. <laughs> then I will heal the land. The reason why we're still stuck in the same cycle is because we haven't turned yet. We're still around the swarm. We like what we're doing. We like being in the swarm. It's comfortable being with the swarm. The swarm supports me. The swarm is my support system. It's easy to be with the swarm. The swarm provides for me. The swarm protects me. But God said, I need you. God said, I need you to come from the swarm and get by yourself and stop being isolated. This is not the time for you to be with friends. This is not the time for you to be bunched up with people. This is the time that I need you by yourself. I got a word for you. I need to speak to you. Not the ones that I did choose. My chosen people will 